Do you want to find out how these three cameras might just be the ideal trio for capturing fast-paced on-the-go b-roll footage solo? Let's explore this setup in this video, maybe this can inspire you to get some ideas for your own upcoming projects. So let's go! Last week I had this production at my day job where I needed to get some b-roll footage at a big kitchen at Malmo Arena where they were preparing a wide plethora of meals, appetizers, dinners, desserts, snacks, all for this massive corporate event expecting about 2300 guests. That's a lot of people and even more food to prepare. Usually on these kind of productions I would have used my Sony a7S III on my DJI gimbal, but this time around I really wanted to try to incorporate my iPhone 15 Pro as my gimbal camera. I realized that you can really get some extremely stable footage if you dial up the stabilization mode in the Blackmagic camera app with a slight drawback of a crazy lag in the viewfinder. But with some practice you can get a feel for how to work with it and additionally it was really nice to give my right arm a break from managing the Sony on a heavy gimbal all day. I also brought this small compact motorized slider and mounted my iPhone 15 Pro on it. And with the slowest speed setting on the motors I got this nice little shot of a plate being prepared with food. So with iPhone 15 Pro as my main gimbal camera I treated my Sony a7S III mainly as a close-up camera, rigged up with a V-mount battery pack and a field monitor. Equipped with a 28 to 200 mm Tamron Super Zoom, I was able to capture close-ups in the kitchen and achieve some of that delicious bokeh. My dedicated behind the scenes camera, the DJI Action 4, is usually attached to my neck mount capturing bits and pieces throughout the filming. But then I got this idea to mount it on my selfie stick and extend it over the counter where the food was being prepared, achieving this fun perspective. Now imagine the rigging needed to pull that kind of shot off with the A7S III and here I am effortlessly holding my Action 4 on a selfie stick taking advantage of its built-in stabilization. Of course the Sony a7S III is a superior camera in all kinds of respects but my relatively inexpensive Action 4 blends surprisingly well with the footage from both the Sony and the iPhone 15 Pro. This integration demonstrates how mixing high-end with more accessible gear can still produce cohesive and visually appealing results, especially when each piece of equipment is utilized to its strengths. I also took my selfie stick with the Action 4 mounted and just walked around to get this sort of FPV drone style footage. I really like how this turned out. Imagine doing this kind of shot in a short film, that would be really cool. Later that evening I stuck around waiting for the food to be served to the guests in this huge arena, which by the way is actually a converted ice hockey rink. And now the iPhone 15 Pro and the Action 4 fell short as it was ridiculously dark in the venue. But no problem for the Sony, I just grabbed it, cranked up the ISO and got me some serviceable shots of the food being served to the guests. I remember back in the days when the number one thing we filmmaker was yearning for, the ability to have shallow depth of field in our small sensor cameras. I was one of those who were building all kinds of 35mm adapters with these spinning discs and vibrating mate screens or ground glass used for projecting the image from a 35mm vintage lens. But nowadays when we're shooting with these huge sensors and able to get this paper thin focus planes, I have to confess I sometimes find myself enjoying shooting with small sensor cameras again. What? With everything remaining sharply in focus it's simply a matter of point and shoot. What a truly delightful experience. Bro what are you talking about man? 
In conclusion, I like how these three cameras helped me solve different challenges I faced during this production and I'm definitely planning to use this workflow again in the future. If you got any questions, let me know in the comment section and I would love to hear how you work with different cameras on your productions. That's all I have for now, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!